Hey everyone, today I've got some news and updates for the upcoming game Ghost. This is a new AAA MMORPG from recently founded studio Fantastic Pixel Castle. Now I've not talked about this game at all so far on the channel, but it is one project I'm definitely going to be keeping a close eye on and expect to cover as time passes. And as a quick note before we dive in, you should know that Ghost is in very early development. It just started production last year. In fact, up until now, they've only released concept art for the game and we will be showing all of that but any additional gameplay or trailer footage you see here in the video, it's just a random assortment of MMOs. That way the entire video isn't the same handful of concept arts just over and over and over again. All right, but let's talk about Ghost because there's a lot of exciting stuff here. So development of this game is being led by well-established industry veteran Greg Street. He cut his teeth in the MMO genre as the lead systems designer for World of Warcraft from 2008 until 2013. During the later years, he became quite well known amongst the WoW community thanks to his constant and thorough communication on the Blizzard forums, where he often discussed game design, balance, mechanics, uh, announced plan changes, and had open discussions about them with the players. I mean, I literally remember reading through random posts on the WoW forums in this time period and seeing Ghost Crawler all the time, pretty much everywhere. He, his presence was ubiquitous. In fact, at the time, he was like the only single point of contact that you had as a player with Blizzard at all, with anyone from Blizzard. So yeah, he was quite well known and... I, I remember him being well liked amongst the community, at least from my recollection. Well, after leaving Blizzard, he moved on to Riot Games, spending a few years working on League of Legends before then shifting focus to the company's in-development Rune Terra MMO. And this lasted up until March 2023, when he announced his departure from the studio for both personal and professional reasons. Now, given that we recently learned that the Riot MMO has restarted its development, beginning again from scratch and scrapping eight years of work as it began pre-production in 2016, it's certainly possible this was part of his professional reasons for leaving Riot at the time. But then a few short months later, in November 2023, Fantastic Pixel Castle was revealed. This company, founded by Greg Street in collaboration with NetEase, them of course providing the funding, the money behind the project, and with this reveal, they also announced the start of production on their new, modernized fantasy MMORPG codenamed Ghost. And what do we actually know about their plans for the game? What are they looking to to do what's their own new personal twist to the MMO genre? Well, we know a fair bit. Their stated goal with Ghost is to bring the social element back to MMOs, saying that they believe the genre has struggled to provide a community you care about and moved too far towards solo adventuring where other players feel like an obstacle that slows you down. And I would say that I generally agree with this sentiment. I mean, I can say at least personally, I have strayed from any heavy, heavy social interaction and group focused content when I play MMOs. Nowadays, I prefer to just like chill, level up solo, and then any of the group content I do engage with by and large has to let me join solo, like solo queue PvP, or dungeons I can queue into to automatically form groups. I'm not really spending a lot of time like chatting with other people in MMOs anymore. Like I do like collaboration with other players, especially out in the open world, that can be a lot of fun, but I'm not going out of my way to uh, chat and for form connections with people online. Part of this is definitely like a shift in design, no doubt MMOs are generally easier to play solo to day than they were 30 years ago. But part of it is also personal preference. Like my time is limited. Yeah, I don't care to spend hours chatting with people in these games, getting to know them. That I'm just not, usually my time playing these games tends to be quite focused because it's rather limited uh, as to how it was in the past. But with that said, again, yes, I do really like playing an MMO and having social encounters with people while I'm out exploring. Like if I can come across a, a dangerous, difficult elite or something, and there's other people around and we can work together to take it on or to bypass some obstacle or to fight other players if there's open world pvp i love that like dynamic emergent social element of mmos but yeah i'm not like chatting with people for five hours and then going to help them do their quest for another three hours. That's just not the reality of my game playing experience with MMOs anymore. So with all that said, I'm curious what their plans are going to be to try to reorient the genre towards those more social focus, not only in how they design the game, but how they incentivize 
players like me to engage with it. All right, next up, they went in to describe how the world is going to be structured in Ghost. They say, imagine standing on the weathered cobblestones of an ancient city. In the sky above you are seemingly endless shards of broken worlds, a cornucopia of biomes that promise unlimited adventure and mystery. You are one of the survivors of an apocalypse lost to memory, and the rebuilding of the world now lies on your shoulders. So this is a game made up, presumably, of many different instance shards. Now, they say that we'll be traveling to these shards to power up our characters to bring back re resources and ultimately we're trying to rebuild the city over time that city will grow and evolve based on the choices and actions that players make from season to season they also say the world of ghost is an original ip it's based on fantasy so we will be fighting with axes and crossbows and magic but at the same time they also want to avoid the tropes of fantasy that we have all seen hundreds of times before so for example there will be no elves and no orcs in ghost now, I love the idea that they're trying to deliver a different spin on fantasy because it is true. We have fought goblins and elves in like most of the MMOs we've played over the last few decades. So something else in terms of a setting while still having that fantasy aesthetic, I, it's welcome to me. The shard thing, on the other hand, I think on paper, it sounds great. My only concern is like the lack of cohesive world that can come with this and what that can mean for immersion in the game. I'll say in my experience, MMOs that have you porting into different realms, they just tend to feel less immersive and more disjointed compared to ones that are made up of a single cohesive of world. I mean, for me at least, part of what made WoW so magical was the ability to walk from the southern tip of Stranglethorn Vale all the way up the continent until you got up into the Plague Lands. Like, yes, there were two separate continents at the time, so you still had to take a boat and that had a screen, but the world felt cohesive and because you had a seamless space for the most part to explore and that really added a lot to the sense of immersion uh i'm just i am a little worried about the disjointed nature of the shards it's specifically in terms of what it means for immersion you could still have a perfectly fine great fun video game that i may very well enjoy playing for hundreds of hours but the world immersion i do feel like will suffer if i'm constantly teleporting and loading into these different areas but again i am not writing off the the idea of shards or the game whatsoever. I think it can be done well, and I hope they do it. I hope they deliver. Uh, they, they go on further to actually describe how the shard system will work. It's going to be broken up into two different types, basically. They say, in our game, you will alternate between private realms that we're calling blue shards for you and your friends, and more public red shards that deliver a traditional massive multiplayer experience. So the blue shards are actually going to play more like a survival game. You're going to be gathering resources, constructing bases, and adventuring through the wilderness. These blue shards, they also say, are extremely variable, a place full of new discoveries and challenges, guaranteeing you'll never see the same blue shard twice. So right away, it was pretty obvious to me here, and they do further clarify, that these blue shard islands are going to be using procedural elements to vary up the biome, the terrain, the type, and the placement of points of interest, and even possibly the layouts of those points of interest. So for example, like you can have dungeons with a ton of different possible path and room combinations until you get to the final boss. The blue shards are also going to belong to individual players. Any changes made to them are persistent and permanent. You can even decide things like how competitive they are. You can focus your shard on guild versus guild PvP combat, for example. Whereas the red shards are entirely different. These are static locations handcrafted by the developer and are going to offer content and encounters and experiences traditional to MMORPGs with many any players in these areas as well. So these will be some of the most challenging places in the game. You'll need to group up to defeat world bosses, to collect valuable resources, and even open the gates to the end game raiding instances. They say the core way to play Ghost is going to be traveling between the blue shards with the survival procedural uh, elements to it, and the red shards with the traditional MMORPG content, as well as also going to the game's central city, which sounds like it's going to be some large player hub. I like the concept here. It's cool that they're trying to cater to these different preferences by having this two type of shard system with one shard being like a survival game with procedural generation and all the variety that that can bring and the other shard being that traditional theme park MMO experience with the group focused content and lots of players and PvP. It also sounds like they're trying to make two games into one which uh, is pretty ambitious, right? That's a pretty ambitious idea. They're making a survival procedural game and they're making a theme park MMO uh, pre-built content game and they're just splitting it up with this shard system.
We'll see how it goes. And what sort of players are they hoping to attract? Well, everyone. They want everyone playing their game. What a shocker. They say that for sweaty raiders who want to invest hundreds of hours into Ghost, you'll have plenty to do. Not only the end game raiding and gearing, but also making new characters, discovering new blue shards with different game changing rules that they can have, and even PvP if you're into that. But for the players who like playing a variety of games rather than just sticking to one, they also say that the story of Ghost will unfold in chapters. So when you finish a chapter, you could take a break at that point and know that you won't won't get left behind when the next chapter comes out. Although I am curious what this is going to mean in terms of things like power progression. So say if you're a player who plays a chapter and then you leave and then you come back with the next chapter, but there are other players who kept playing, they kept leveling up or gr grinding gear or resources or currency or whatever. What's the distinction between the two going to be? I would actually just assume that the story side of things is separate from the dungeon and other progression stuff in the game. So gear won't matter for playing through the chapter stories as they roll them out. But if you do stick around and collect gear, that's going to be helpful for clearing dungeons, for doing raids, for progressing into harder shards if they have a difficulty system associated with that, and then for PvP as well, uh, uh, presumably. And then they also say one final core tenet of the game is to not have barriers between players as well. So if you're a brand new player, you're jumping into the game for the first time, you should be able to jump in and play with anyone else, even if they've been grinding and leveling up and do doing whatever progression systems for years on end. So now about classes and progression. This is actually pretty cool here. They say there are going to be dozens of classes in Ghost, which is a fairly large number for an MMO. In keeping with the spirit of giving you many ways to play, Ghost is going to be extremely alt-friendly. They say that any time invested in one character benefits all of your characters, which sounds to me like they're going to have account-wide progression in the game. There will be many different ways to fill the role of tanking, healing, and damage dealing roles. There will be some more iconic play styles, as well as some that are a little more experimental. Of the dozens of classes, we're going to be selecting from several to start start with when Ghost launches, with more variety and more options for classes being available as rewards from within the game. Ghost Combat here is going to be a mixture of things. We're going to be looking at a game that combines both action and tab target, so a soft lock system as it's often referred to. They say that Ghost Combat combines updated control schemes and UI with the classic targeting and combat strategy we love from RPGs. They've said they've invested a lot of effort into playtesting their gameplay, which is absolutely critical in my opinion. In fact, I consider the number one important thing in any game for you to get right is the combat because if your game isn't fun to play moment to moment, second to second, engaging with one enemy or groups of enemies or whatever combination, if that's not fun, everything else in the game almost doesn't matter to me. Like, I don't care how big your world is, how cool the environments look, how interesting some of the content might be. It needs to be fun to play for me to stick around. So it's good that they're saying that this is a focus. They have said in interviews, again, that it is going to be a soft lock system or hybrid action combat. Uh, there are other games that do this, including Guild Wars 2 and Elder Scrolls Online. And I would say this is a bit of a gamble. Like, depending on who you ask, Guild Wars 2 either has the best or the worst combat in the genre. And ESO, for all of its strength, strengths, uh, one of the consistent pain points that I see people bring up in discussing the game is its combat. And you know what? I personally, I, I would say I love ESO. I, I think so much about the game is really great, but the combat has always felt floaty to me. Like I, I don't hate combat in ESO, but I certainly don't love it either. So yeah, I think they're taking a bit of a risk going with this uh, hybrid, this soft lock system. Now they have said they want their game playable on controller because it will be launching on PC and console. So their idea right now is that moving the joystick will move the camera and then that the soft lock system will target enemies for you. And controller support, I will add, likely also implies a smaller skill set is what we should expect. I wouldn't expect like 40, 50, 60 skills active on five different hot bars like you might get in various iterations of WoW, for example. Um, they're also looking to add a lot of combat mechanics from various popular action games. They reference, for example, Shadows of Mordor, Spider-Man, and Assassin's Creed, saying that things like combos, assassinations, and counters are all elements that they want to bring into their game as they feel like it could really fit into the MMO genre. And getting a good a like game that has some of those action elements in an MMO space is something that I, I personally have wanted for a while. I love the idea of like Dark Souls combat, but an MMO. And I don't feel like a lot of games have delivered on it. All of the action combat games that I played to date have really just felt more like cleave spamming, right? Like cleave and AOE spamming and lots of dodging around. Like a game that mixes the benefits of a tab target system and the kind of potential interactions that you can have and the spell variety and stuff that you can 
can have and what that can mean for combat encounters, specifically in boss fights and dungeons and raids. I feel like tab target really excels at that, whereas action combat like feels good when you're like AOE farming, but then a lot of the uh, structured PVE and the group content feels like it can get suffer because it just feels like every it's a spam fest. And healing can also be a little strange in action combat games. And there's been all sorts of games and, and various games have done various aspects of this uh, more and less successfully. But in general, I feel like there are strengths to both. And I feel like splitting the difference could be good, but it, it, it's a, it is a bit of a gamble. That's what I would say. We are still in early days of development, uh, but things do appear to be moving along pretty quickly. In fact, just the other day, they released a fairly lengthy blog with details for their Milestone 1 updates. This essentially was giving us a behind the scenes, like sneak peek look at the early stages of development. And let's talk about what we saw. So they showcased the starting prototypes for the game with several specific milestones that they had for combat, zones, and world building. So for the gameplay side of things, they said they wanted to start having the foundation of MMO combat in place, including details like respawning when dead, having a basic healing system. Combat is also going to include being able to, of course, move around the map, its basic HUD and uh, UX, as well as having enemies to fight, and a basic experience and objective system to test out different ideas for progression. As for the zones, they want to have a, a, iterations of the red zones and the blue zones. Their goals were to just have an example of each of them. Red zones being those more static. They have to be consistent and players need to be able to load in to recognizable points within them, while blue zones with their procedural elements need to be able to generate these new environments and place objects and creatures within them in a way that makes sense. And then finally is their world building goals for the art. Their goal was to have the first version of the game's general style or how the game is going to look and feel. And for a narrative, they wanted to set the foundation of the world of ghosts, the starting point of the game's story. And they showed us how this progression looked. They started out showing us what I usually re see referred to as a gray box, although this one is like brownish in tint. This was from December 2023. And then they progress further, giving the world a bit more color and some more texture to it with an example from March 2024. And then finally, fleshing it out, adding uh, more lighting detail and shadow elements and even NPCs in it with some examples from late March 2024. And they did note here in showing these that these graphics are nowhere near final. In fact, they are not ghost graphics at all. Everything here, everything thing is entirely placeholder. They're just trying to set a base foundation for the core of the game, but nothing about this is how Ghost is going to look at all. From all of their testing, not only did they build the world, but they managed to get the gameplay systems to work. They were able to have us load into red zones to fight smaller enemies that re rewarded us in gaining experience. There were objectives that they could go out and complete. They could even then spend experience on basic ways to improve your character or, or their combat. And they had a few different other things, like they have the two starting classes classes that are just cut now codenamed to sword and fireball. They have the ability to tab target between enemies and they even implemented uh, some version of a boss that you could die to and then respawn after that. And then they had the zone system. So red and blue zones, they have implemented these. So for example, they have the blue zones where you load in and there was some procedural placement of the environment and details within the environment, creatures and things like that. And they also have the red zones, which again are the handcrafted things. Uh, it seems like they barely just got started with that as well. And then finally, part of the milestone here was for them to begin that world building. So from the narrative and world building side, their creative team spent this milestone building out the history and the world of Ghost. On the art side of things, they brought in some artists to really uh, start nailing down the general art style and like visual planning for it. Really, really early stuff, but they gave us examples of like what a cityscape could look like. They say this is a city uh, a, a touched by ancient divine powers that are long la lost. Some early iterations of potential enemy encounters counters, types of enemies that we might fight against, and then early explorations into the art style in UE5, playing around with elements like lighting, contrast, and skybox. So taking a look at this piece of concept art here gives us an idea of the tone, the feel, and the general presentation. This is not anything in-game render. This is all just art done by an artist, but it, it should give us an idea of the direction that they're headed in here. Uh, and that is pretty much everything we know about Ghost thus far. So how far away is this game? Well, my initial, like, gut assumption would be like five to seven years away, right? Especially considering they just began development 
last year, not even a full year ago, like four to six months ago is when they started developing this game. However, they are saying it might come sooner than what I might be expecting. To quote here, they say, our goal is to move as quickly as we can in development, and we have many advantages that will help us bring Ghost to you faster than is typical for AAA games. They also intend to include us early on in the development process and are committed to making even major changes to the game based on player feedback. And as soon as they're ready for playtesters, they will let us know. So it does sound like we're going to be getting some early access playtesting version of this game possibly within the next two to three years like that's that's my projected time scale anyways and as for the business model they say that they haven't entirely settled on it it is too early to go into detail but they are promising we shouldn't worry about gacha mechanics we shouldn't worry about loot boxes or any ver variation of pay to win so maybe we get a base box price maybe they have if not a hard subscription they have a light subscription something like what eso does where you kind of want to buy the subscription if you're going to be actively playing the game for more than a week or two but it's not mandatory to play the game you can play it without it it just makes it much much more convenient maybe they even just do the battle pass thing which seems so prevalent nowadays but we will have to see um yeah that's it that's ghost that's what we know so far again super early days i would assume five plus years away. They're saying it's going to come earlier than we would expect from AAA development. The expectation for an MMO is five to seven years. If they're saying earlier, maybe we're looking at three to five years. Yes, you're not going to be playing this game anytime soon, but it is interesting. It is a new AAA MMO. Uh, I'm going to continue to follow it. So expect updates now and again when major uh, new details and information comes out. But that is it for today. Thank you as always for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you all next time.